he loved me. Amen. 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 Who's happy in the Lord tonight? Everybody? Praise his name. Well, I tell you, we've had some great weather. And we needed this rain. Amen. Stay with me. Take your songbook and turn to 129. 129. We'll sing at the cross. But we'll try to sing at the cross.
Brother Chan, would you pray, please? Hi, Heavenly Father, once again, we're just so grateful and thankful and humbled that we can come to your house just to give you all the praise and the glory that you deserve. Father, we ask that you be the preacher as he brings us your message. Just open up our hearts and our minds so we'll receive what you have for each and every individual here. And Lord, it is still our humble prayer that if there's anybody here that does not know you as their personal Savior, that tonight they will receive you before they walk out those doors. We ask that you be the gift and the gift in Christ's name. Amen. 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 She needs somebody to take this for the summer. And don't all y'all jump at once. Why? Well, I was going to talk to her tonight about it. I told Brother Chanter. Yeah. I'll ask her uh, what I would do in class. Yeah. There you go. Well, he answered another prayer. There's another one answered. Two in a row. Yeah. Anybody else got an answered prayer? Huh? My dad's getting better. So he's, you know, it's, it ain't all doom and gloom like they say it is, folks. Amen. We got a lot to look forward to. Time is on our side. Maybe not flesh-wise or just body-wise, but spirit-wise it is. Amen? So, but anyway... Our next meeting is going to be Friday night. It's going to be our Reformers Unanimous class right here in the auditorium at 7 p.m. Everyone's invited. Saturday morning at the Shell Factory Flea Market. They get out there, they get about there about 8.30 and they just hand people tracts and buy people to church. Amen? That's a noble thing to do and it's our reasonable service to do this as well. Amen? We need to sow the seed. And then 8 p.m. on Saturday evening is our church-wide prayer meeting right here in the auditorium. Everyone's invited. But if you can't be here because you live way out in the boonies, set your clock and pray at 8 o'clock at your house. Amen? Amen? It works for me. Amen? And then, let me see here. Coming up next Sunday night, the teens are going to have a barbecue dinner fundraiser that's going to be right after the evening service next Sunday night. And they're just going to be donations. But we're going to benefit the teens going to the summer camp. Please support the teens. Amen? This church always does. 
And then coming up June the 17th, it's barbecue time again at Sunnings. That's right. The men were going to have a, a Father's Day banquet there, and they got good ribs. I can tell you that. And you can use the sign-up sheet and the table in the foyer to reserve your seat. And then coming up July 30th in the evening service, we're going to have a special time. It's a cowbell service. And if you want to pre if you want to preach, you need to see Pastor Rohan. I can see him right now. Amen. But anyway, that's going to be the last day of July, so we've got still got some time for that. And then 10 o'clock is what on Sunday morning? Sunday school. Sunday school. My lady's not here tonight. <laughs> She she keep us straight on that. You all need to be here at 10 o'clock for Sunday school, 11 for our morning service. Prayer meetings at 4.30. Men's and ladies, the choir at 5. Evening service at 6 on Sunday afternoon. And then Monday night, Pastor's Spiritual Warfare Bible Study right next door at 7 o'clock. Everybody's invited. Right next door in the fellowship hall. And it'll bring us back to midweek prayer service right where we're at right now, 7 p.m. Amen? Amen? And I've got a couple prayer requests before we get started. One, one individual named Bobby Benson, he needs prayer. He's an alcoholic. But besides that, he needs to be saved. Amen? Right. Amen. And there's another boy that works over there with uh, Jim Thomas' brother, Bill, <laughs> over at this North Star Yacht Club. His name's Robert, and he's supposed to be here, and he needs saved too. Amen. So just pray for these guys. I'm praying for them because I want God to save them. Amen? That's how I got saved. People prayed for me. Who was that against Steve? His name's Robert, and I don't know his last name. I didn't ever know it was Bobby. Bobby Benson. That's okay. Yeah, he, he got laid off because he can't stay sober. So he, now he doesn't have a job, and he's boo-hoo and this, that, and the other. But I said, I want to I want to bring him to all you if he'll come. I can tell him, and he's on the way. I can grab him if he'll come. I'll bring him. He needs it. There's a lot of people hurting out there, folks. Amen? And they're not that hard to find. The forest is full. And, you know, the Lord wants us to use the talent and the spirit that He gives us to reach those people. Amen? So, don't take it lightly. It's a very, very important thing. And we will be held accountable for that. Amen? But who else has got a preacher's got his hand up? Uh, ben Milliken is going to be having surgery. They're prepping him all the right now. He's got appendicitis for that. Ooh. And uh, so they're supposed to have surgery, I think, at 9 o'clock. So he's probably in pre up right now, I'd say. Yep. So I'll yeah. uh, be praying for him and Belinda. Okay. All right. And also, my wife's coming in uh, tomorrow night at 7 45. And my mother's coming home at 1 o'clock Friday. Amen. So you ain't going to be all alone no more? No. <laughs> I hate being home alone too. I just, I don't yeah, like it. It is. You don't sound too bad. <laughs> I've been there and done it too, so. Who else? You got prayer requests. Go ahead, Debbie. Then I'll get you, Robert. Go ahead. A friend from my niece, Madison, she went in for surgery yesterday to continue the reconstruction of her jaw and mouth. Okay. Um, this has been an ongoing thing. And uh, she did fine with the surgery, but now she's in recovery, and they have to travel to Texas every time that they do this. Mm -hmm. So she and her mom are out there for a couple of weeks under the doctor's care, so we'll remember them in prayer. And also, we learned yesterday, a childhood friend of mine, her mom, um, was the director of mine and Mark's wedding, and I grew up with her girls, and one of those girls passed away yesterday with stage four cancer. Her name was Linda, and she's like my age, so pray for that family. This is their second child that they've lost. Ooh. An adult child. Ooh. Robert, then I'll give you ten. Go ahead, Robert. Timothy. Uh, my family has a couple of needs. Uh, my family, a couple of members of my family have some needs. This mission of God. I'd like to just praise God for the answer of Brenda and I's prayer. We, uh, Jenny Felber came up to me on a Sunday night and said, you know, God's been uh, 
you know, leading her to help us. And, and, uh, and so she's going to be part of the team in Children's Church starting uh, this Sunday. And so Amen. it's a great Amen. thing. Amen. Jenny and I was in the bus ministry when we were a lot younger, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, she was a little girl and I was a young man. And so now, you know, God put us back together. So it's great. Amen. 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 That's what happens when you get faithful to God. Go ahead, Mary. I have a, uh, a friend, and he's a, also a father of a child that I keep at the daycare. And he's in the hospital. He's already had a heart attack, but he didn't have a heart attack. But we were doing some tests, and the, all the results are not bad. And he, re he really needs a lot of prayer, and I don't think he's saved. He's not going to the family is whatsoever. Uh, we need to really pray for him. I think he's scared. Uh, maybe this is a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Uh, Jason. Jason Williams. Williams. Okay. Uh, so he's in uh, health department. Okay. He's a lot of prayer. And uh, the little girl that comes with me all the time, the baby, she had a baby today. Oh, good. Yeah. Everything was okay? Everything's fine. Okay. So that was a girl that you watched as a baby, Mary. I don't know. It might be a good time for it. Okay. Anyway, she could come to church with me. My girl then brought into her place before. I think when she was young, she was here. She was giving the baby up to the doctor. But I want her to continue to come to the church. And I know some of the for her. You know what? We're all adopted. Yes. Amen. Is that a bad thing? Also, the teens on the 17th are having a, I don't know, I guess maybe we'll go to a car wash. But they're having a yard sale. Uh, we need to try to get some more money up for these kids to go to camp. We okay. can't have a yard sale here. And if everybody, anybody has anything you want to give us to sell, we're glad to accept anything, and if we have to come pick it up, we'll pick it up. Okay. The 17th. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Just have it before 5 p.m. We will. We're yeah. going to end it, so if there's any boys there that right. wants to go with dads right. and stuff, yes. Yeah. Or either they can leave, yes. Yeah, that kind of rang a bell when you said the 17th. So. And if it doesn't rain. If it don't rain. Y'all yeah. might be praying for this rain. Would y'all all come to that daycare and stay in? Yeah, you all need to 
Mary, take him for a canoe ride. Yeah, but we, this was a drought buster, is what this was, because we were in a bad drought. There was people's wells going dry. Ask Pat Proctor about there, he'll tell you. He's got a, his well went dry. So. <laughs> but anyway, and it knocks down the fire danger too, so that's a good thing. But, so, anybody else? Come on, we're on a roll here. Go ahead, one more time. George. Yes, you all want to keep my cousin Tony in for, um, they found a small cancer of thyroid, so far it's contained, we were trying to stay contained for the most spread. Also for uh, my cousin Stephanie, she's going through the marital problems right now, her husband's with her husband, and uh, my brother Jamie is in the hospital right now, it's all due to the time for the Lord to keep going through the All right. Spoken. Last but not least, Mary. Our kids. We all have kids that need prayer. Amen. Amen. If you don't, it's just because you don't have any. Amen. But anyway, and don't forget Daniel Davenport. Okay, Marvin. Diane. I just remember Trent. Daniel Davenport, he's got a cancer right here. On his side right here, it's about that tall. And they're just trying to shrink it so they can operate and take it out. So he's going to be up there for a week, and I guess just pray for him. And uh, I don't know about his salvation either. I'm kind of worried about that because uh, Jehovah Witnesses, just because of their doctrine. Not that they're bad people, but their doctrine is straight out of hell. Amen? Yeah. If you know what I'm talking about, they you know, they don't take Jesus at all. And that ain't what the Bible says. You have to have Jesus. Amen? Yeah. I don't know what to say, but just pray for him. And one more time, anybody else? Uh, Don Hardman? Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I have a cousin up in uh, Tampa. She passed away uh, Tuesday uh, with cancer. And they're going to have a funeral Saturday up in Tampa. So we pray for the Lockerbie family. Okay. Go ahead, John. Our mm -hmm. missionaries in the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. They need lots of prayer, all of them. The people, but especially our missionaries that are yeah. out there. You can hear about that much on the news. Not, you will, not, not the regular news, but you will hear it. News. Exactly. But you know, here we got all this stuff going on with these Muslims around the world. Do you hear anything from the United Nations? That they're going against them? Or they're you know why? Because the United Nations is all the nations are mostly Muslims. Did you know that? Do you know that? You know it now. And the ones that aren't, they're, they're working as hard as they can to take them over. Look what's happening over in Great Britain. Amen? You can't deal with them people. They're wild, man. If you don't believe me, just ask a preacher go to his Bible study and he'll teach you about them. Amen? If we're ready to pray, it's time to come down and pray, folks. Come on.
Lord, we come to you this evening humbling ourselves before you. And dear God, we ask you that you just bless us. You bless this church and our pastor and that you give us safety. Dear Lord, you've heard all these prayer requests and I'm not even going to try to reiterate them all, dear Lord. Uh, but we ask that your will be done in this, dear God. And there's so many people friends and family that are they're ill, suffering from cancer and other diseases. And, and we know, dear Lord, that a lot of them aren't going to get well. But that's your will, and that we accept your will for what it is. I especially ask you, dear Lord, that you be with our nation, and it starts with us. That we not be ashamed of you. And when we see wrong out there, don't sit there with their mouth shut stand up and speak out that you'll fill us with boldness dear God our country is slaughtering babies by the thousands every day we drive by the clinics and that and turn our head and forget about it we become ashamed of you dear Lord I'm ashamed of me I'm guilty of not speaking up enough myself dear God on a regular basis we need to be bold Dear God, I ask you that you'll strengthen us and fill us with boldness. You've got the power, dear Lord, and you give it to us freely if we'll accept it. So I ask you, dear God, fill us up. Let us be somebody that, that's used for your purposes, that we glorify your name on a regular basis, dear Lord, from the time we get up till we go to bed. I ask you, dear God, that you'll strengthen our pastor and protect him arms out there everywhere and I know the devil's after him every day I ask you dear Lord that when he preaches that he'll fill us up with with your wisdom and joy and that dear God will receive this and happily and gladly tell others about you and dear God if there's one person here today even one dear Lord that doesn't know you as their Savior I pray that you'll just burden their heart so bad they can't stand it that they'll come up here and and come to know you and almost everyone here has got children and grandchildren dear God and I pray that not a one will perish without not knowing you dear God make our country strong again dear Lord and we turn back to you and the leaders of our church dear Lord protect them be it their youth and that our youth will increase here too dear Lord so that we can continue to be a good Bible church that glorifies your holy name. So I ask you, dear God, that you'll forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. And that everything we do will glorify you. And I ask you for these blessings, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn to first, second Corinthians with me. Second Corinthians. Good to see everybody tonight. I'll tell you, this rain has sure been a blessing. I'll tell you what, it's uh, We sure needed it. All right, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, but I want to read just a couple of verses there in chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 7. And the Bible says in verse uh, 16, it says, In what agreement hath the temple of God with idols. For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, 
and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Verse 1 of chapter 7, Having therefore these promises, talking about what we just read, Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us, we have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech towards you, great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort, I am exceeding joyful in all tribulation. For when we were come unto Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down comforteth us by are comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what, I, uh, what revenge in all things ye were approved Ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did, not, did it not for this cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore, we are comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank and praise you tonight for Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your marvelous grace. And Father, I pray that, Lord, that anointing might fall down upon this message, upon your messenger here tonight. And Lord, I pray that God you accomplish what you've set the Word of God out to do. Lord, touch your hearts. Open our eyes and our minds to it, and we'll be careful now to give you the praise and the honor and the glory because we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Paul wrote 1 Corinthians for a reason, and he was rebuking the Corinthian church for some things they had going on in the church. So as a result, he was here in chapter 7, he was talking about, like at verse 8, it says, for though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. He said, look, I know I came down on you hard, but I had to just to show you that you were in the wrong, and as a result of me telling you and showing you you were wrong, you repented of the wrong. You corrected it. And see, that's what we've got to learn in, in this life that we have is... And that's what I want to preach tonight, Lord, give me liberty to do it, is repentance and change. See, if you repent of something, a wrong in your life, you're going to change. 
I mean, when I got saved, I repented of my sin, I repented of my way of life, and therefore God saved me, and I was changed by God Himself. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. So God did a work. And look at verse 10. It says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Now see, when you get, God starts dealing with you in your heart. And I don't know where everybody's soul is here tonight. I'm hoping everybody here is saved, but there might be somebody here that's not saved. God's going to speak tonight using me, using the Word of God, to talk to you and tell you you need to have some repentance in your heart and your mind to turn you to God. That's what it's all about. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God is what brings about salvation. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's the Word of God that does everything. It's the Word of God. And see, that's what the devil tries to disrupt. And uh, I've been studying for our, our Monday night class. I started studying yesterday and today a little bit on how the devil is a counterfeiter of the Word of God. He's, he likes to distort the Word of God. And you've got to understand that he's a liar. So the Bible says that God is truth, but the devil is a liar. So anything to do with God is right and true. Anything to do with the devil is deceit and a lie. So you've got to understand, we've got to understand what this book says, because you can get messed up reading this book if you don't have a guide. Now, what's the guide? The Bible says that the Spirit of God will guide you into all truth. Now, see, when I got saved, I got a guide. The Bible says that I've been sealed into the day of redemption, and I've got a guide that guides me through every little verse here. Every, I might not understand all of it, and I, I wished I did, but I don't. But the stuff that I need to understand, God does guide me through that Holy Spirit to where I can give you something. And I want to let you know that when you do, that for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. When I saw that I was lost and on my way to hell, I was sorry that I'd sinned against God, and I repented of my sin, and I turned to a holy and righteous God, and that wrought salvation in my soul. Amen. That's what salvation's all about. Repentance is the first step to change. Turn, uh, turn over to Ezekiel with me here. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter, it's right after the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in the Old Testament. It's Numbers, right after Numbers, and you hit Ezekiel. Somewhere after that. Ezekiel chapter 18. All right, now look at verse 20. The Bible says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness upon, of the wicked shall be upon him. And then it goes on over in verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. To see, salvation is an actual turning in the direction you're going. Before I got saved, I was headed in this direction, and that was right straight to hell. And when I saw my condition with a holy and righteous God involved in it, I repented, and I had godly sorrow toward repentance, and I made a 180-degree turn and started headed toward heaven. I've got that old life behind me. I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, and that repentance took place in my life. It took place in your life also if you're saved. You have got to, without repentance, 
Salvation is nothing. Now you think about that. And I'll deal with that here in a minute. God has a way of freeing you from sin and bondage. In 2 Timothy 2.25 it says, In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Now see, a lot of people reject the truth. And what I was saying a while ago, see, the devil's a liar, and the devil is not truth, he's a lie, but more people adhere to the devil than they do to the Lord. You say, well, I can't see that, preacher. Well, you look at all these false religions and cults around the world. God ain't in that, I hate to tell you that. There's only one way to heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if you've got any religion or anything or any cult or whatever it is, they leave Jesus Christ out of it. They're taking you right on the devil's road to hell. You've got to understand that repentance brings about salvation. It worketh salvation. God's only plan is true repentance. In 2 Timothy 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants everybody to come to repentance. That's what He sent His Son Jesus Christ for. That's what He gave us the Word of God for. That's what He's got a Holy Spirit of God that will guide us and convict us of our sin through the Word of God. Over Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. That's talking to the church there in the book of Revelation. The church has some sin in it, and, the Bible, and the, John was saying, the Lord told John to write this down, you need to repent, church, or I'm going to take your candlestick from you. That candlestick is the preacher. That's the man of God that's in that church. They're going to take it away without the light of the Word of God shining. Guess what will happen to the church? Revelation 3.19 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You know, that's the last command of the Lord Jesus Christ to the church. Repent. Church, we got a lot to repent about. Man. True repentance is a difficult process. The Bible says the way of transgressors is hard. You ever seen people that are either they're saved or they're not saved and not living for the Lord, whatever? And it seems like everything just seems to happen to them all the time. Well, you say, well, preacher, I'm trying to live for the Lord and all kind of stuff happens for me. It not ain't the same type of stuff, honey. The way of transgressors is hard. You don't know the sleepless nights a lot of these people have. You just see them when they're smiling and they're all right and everything. But when they're alone and God starts dealing with them and showing them their sin and they reject the Word of God, they refuse to repent and to turn to a holy and righteous God for salvation. The conviction, you know, a lot of people, they get under conviction and they don't want to be around anybody that is right with the Lord. You had some friends kind of stay away from you once in a while when you get yourself close to God. You get out there and you buddy up with them and do the same things they do and you'll be all right, man. You'll have friends coming out the, the back door, man. But you try living for the Lord and it's going to separate the saints from the sinners. I guarantee you. And see, that's what repentance is all about. It requires, first of all, confession of sin. Repentance does. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. 
When you're walking after the flesh, honey, you're going to have some problems in this flesh. But if you're walking in the Spirit, God's going to bless you for it. God's going to honor you for your faithfulness to Him. Amen. That shows true repentance in your life. It, not, it also requires, and it begins with sorrow. How many of you ever done something wrong and just really felt bad about it? Well, see, that's the beginning of repentance in your life. In 2 Corinthians, we just saw that in 7.10. It says now, uh, or 7.10, uh, 7, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6, we dealt with this in our Bible study the other night. It, it says, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. God repented. It repented God that he had made man. Why? Because the wickedness of man was in the thoughts and imagination of his heart was evil continually. It requires a heart that is not hardened. Over in Psalms 95, verses 7 and 8, it says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. The Jewish people, they hardened their heart toward the things of God. And you can sit right here in a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church and do the same thing. When God puts something on your heart to act upon it and he says, hey, you need to do this and you sit there and you don't do it, you are hardening your heart toward the word of God. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. The results of true repentance are visible. And I, as I was studying this, I got to thinking about that prodigal son. He told his daddy, he says, his daddy said, I want all my inheritance. I want everything that's coming to me. He says, I want to, I'm going to leave home. I'm, I'm going off to the far country. He got everything, and then he went up there and took his journey to the far country, and he got up there, and he had a big time. He was partying and had a bunch of friends around him. All of a sudden, there was a famine in the land. He ran out of money. His friends left him wound up in the hog pen eating the husk that the swine was, would eat. And then he, the Bible says in verse 17, it says, and when he came to himself, everybody sitting here tonight has to come to themselves. I don't know what you might be going through. I don't know what kind of trial or testing or whatever you're going through. It's, it's coming about for one thing, and that's to help you to come to yourself to where you know to where you put your trust and faith in. Amen. See, the Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. I hate to tell you, you can't handle everything in this life by yourself. Right. Amen. Amen. We've got a God that loves us, and we were talking last night uh, in the Bible study about the thoughts of God. God thinks about us. He's got good and pleasant thoughts about us. Man, praise God. I, can you imagine a holy and righteous God taking time to think about me and you? Glory, hallelujah, man. That'll get you a little excited. In 2 Timothy 2.25, the Bible says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. We don't need to go like both barrels blazing. We need to go to these people in meekness. That's what the Bible says. We don't need to condemn people that are in sin. We need to love them. Show them the love of Christ. 
In Luke chapter 3 and verse 8 it says, Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. He don't need us. He can take a rock and do the same thing if he wanted to, but he wants to use us. Repentance is the absence of realization in our lives. That word realization has to do with the power of reasoning. You know how, you know how everybody tries to figure out everything? How is that working for you? By my Bible says, over in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, trust, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. See, there's people that are going through stuff and they're not giving it to God. I don't know how many times I've labored in a situation and just kind of worried about it and worried about it. And then finally I come to the end of me and I say, okay, God, this is yours. I can't handle it. You know what God does? He says, okay. He says, don't worry, I've got this. Amen. True repentance is the expression of genuine sorrow. Now, I've seen people come down to an altar and just cry their eyes out and get up and go out and do the same thing they did before they'd done it. You know, Esau cried and wept. Didn't do him no good, did it? But when you have that heart change, that's when the true expression of sorrow is shown in your life. You'll show God that you're sorry. True repentance is also the willingness to openly confess sin. A lot of people try to hide it, don't they? You know what it says in James chapter 5 and verse 16? It says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Have you ever wronged somebody? Have you ever gone to them and said, look, I, I messed up, I'm sorry, I wronged you, will you forgive me? Well, have you? Amen. True repentance will bring about open confession. You know, there's people that are mad at people for years and years and years and years and years and years. Perfect example, my cousin, the one that just passed away. She's been in church for years, as long as I've known her. And something happened when her mom and dad died, and her brother, I don't know what all happened, but they have not hardly spoken in probably 40 years. Now she's dead. Can't talk to her no more. What a shame. We need to understand that godly sorrow is going to work repentance in our lives. We're going to want to straighten out the wrongs in our life. And see, that's getting close to God, church. When we repent and we start confessing, God opens those windows of heaven and he says, I really like this. Repentance will bring the freedom to make restitution. 
when we repent, it'll open the doors to where we can go get ourselves right, not only with God, but with one another. That's what repentance is. We need to understand that godly sorrow worketh repentance. When we are sorry before a holy and righteous God, it'll do a work in our heart, and then in turn, we'll let it spread around about everybody around us. I guarantee you, it's, it's catching. It's catching. So I've got one thing to say to you. Repent! Let's all stand up and have an invitation. Woke somebody up. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank and praise you tonight for the Lord Jesus. And God, I pray that you'd help every one of us, Lord, to have that repented attitude, Lord, towards the things of God. Lord, if there's anything that's all but in any of us, Father, I pray that God, the Holy Spirit of God, will reveal it in our hearts here tonight. Help us, God, to get it right. And Lord, help us, God, to for confess it and forsake it. And Lord, you've told us that if we'll confess it, God, you will forgive us. And Lord, I just pray that, Lord, the ones that's here tonight, they're going through a little bit of trial in their hearts and their lives. God, I pray that you might comfort them, Lord, from above. Lord, show them, God, that you are a God and you are in charge. And, God, you can handle any problem. And we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. 249. I got something wrong I need to repent for. That's human nature. You get along with God and you do some repenting tonight. You, if you got, God's told you, you know that there's something at all between you and the Lord. Get it right. Get it right. You'll never be happier in your life when you do. All right, let's be closed in prayer. And uh, Brother Richard, won't you close us here tonight, brother?